Hello, everyone. Uh, Y'all, thanks for coming back. Y'all, today we're going to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. It's probably the most important way. It always works. The quadratic formula works for any quadratic. You can use it all the time. All right? When I was your age, I just always used the quadratic formula. I always used it because it always works. All right, today's objective, to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula, of course. And guys, this is it right here. It's the quadratic formula. It's, it's, it's famous, okay? It's a little bit cumbersome, but we'll learn about it. All right, today's essential question, what can the quadratic formula tell us about the solution to a quadratic equation? You know, not only can it solve the equation, but it gives us some information even before we solve it. Right? There's something called the discriminant, which is a part of the equation. Okay. Now we've learned a, a bunch of ways to solve quadratic equations. Okay. Again, the final method is the quadratic formula. These are the ways we've learned. And guys, completing the square works for every quadratic too, but it's kind of hard sometimes to complete the square. All right. If you can factor it, factor it, all right? And again, if there's no X term, the square root is easy to do, but you know, how often does that happen? All right, in graphing you can do it, you use Desmos, but sometimes you don't get the perfect answer. You need to know exactly the answer, all right? So we use the quadratic formula. All right, remember a quadratic equation, standard form. It looks like this, AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. That's the standard form of a quadratic. Well, why don't we just, since complete the square works for every quadratic, why don't we just use this standard form with A, B, C and solve for X by completing the square? And we can do that. And when we do that, this is what happens. X equals all of this over here, negative B plus or minus, the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That's the quadratic formula. Now you might not believe me here, but here's the proof. All right, and you don't have to do this on the test. I just want to show it to you. Again, y'all, this is standard form on the top. If we're going to complete the square, we would first divide everything by a. That's what we, we would do first. Then we'd have to get the C over A to the other side. Because now we can complete the square here, okay? So here we complete the square by adding it to both sides. B squared over 4A squared. We add that to both sides. All right? Over on this side, they're getting a common denominator. 4A squared. They're getting a common denominator so they can put it into one fraction. Over here, they're not doing anything at all on the left side until right here. Again, we completed the square, so now we can write it as a perfect square. This is the perfect square right here. And this is the fraction we have on the other side. So now we take the square root of both sides. All right? So what's inside the square just comes out. And over here, you put it inside a, a square root sign, and it's plus or minus. That's what they're doing here, plus or minus. All right, then you have to subtract b over 2a from both sides. That solves for x right there. Negative b over 2a plus this great big radical here. Okay? Now, if you notice this big radical, the denominator is 4a squared. That's a perfect square. We can take that outside the radical. The denominator can come outside. It's 2a. And that's the same denominator as this term. So we can put it together in under one fraction. And that's what they did there, okay? It's a super cool proof. All right, guys. Now, part of the quadratic formula, the part that's under the radical sign, under the square root sign, is called the discriminant. And that's one of our vocabulary issues for today. I mean, that's the, basically the only new word. 
All right, the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Right, and sometimes we even write the quadratic formula. It's much simplified like this. It looks a lot simpler there. If we just take the, just say this is the discriminant underneath the radical. All right, the discriminant gives us some information about the number of real roots. Again, if the discriminant is greater than zero, then you can have two real roots. Okay, let's go back. Because you're going to have a plus side and a minus side. Because there'll be a number over here. All right? If the discriminant equals zero, then there's only one real root or real solution, is what they're saying here. Again, if this is zero, then there is no plus or minus side. There's just one number here. There's no plus or minus. So, of course, there's only one solution. And if it's less than zero, if the discriminant is negative, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So there are no real solutions if the discriminant is negative. So we can get a, a good feel for the nature of the solution just by looking at the discriminant. Also, I wanted to point out, this is the quadratic formula up top here, put together. But sometimes we separate it into two different terms, because it gives us some information. Guys, remember this formula right here? x equals negative b over 2a? That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. Remember? Negative b over 2a. All right? So what's left over here, the plus minus side, think of it as kind of like the two wings of the quadratic. You have the vertex, and then one side of it swings up and hits the x-axis on one side, and the other side swings up and hits the x-axis on the other side. Okay? And again, if, this, if the second term here, the plus-minus side, is zero, then the vertex is the solution. It just touches the x-axis at the vertex. Okay? All right, guys, if we're given a quadratic to solve, you can plug the values of A, B, and C. You must have it in standard form. Must be in standard form. All right, equal to zero. To pr properly identify the A, B, and the C. Once you get that, you can plug the A, B, and C into this equation and solve it. And do it all at once. But I often um, show my students to do the discriminant first. Just take the b squared minus 4ac and just calculate it and see what it is. All right, then the formula becomes much simpler. You can just take the square root of that number then. Because negative b, I mean b is easy just to write in here, and 2a is easy too. The discriminant is kind of the hard part to calculate. All right, or if you want, this is a quadratic formula equation solver. Is that a math site called Math is Fun? All right, just make sure you have the quadratic in standard form. You know, identify the A, B, and C and plug them into the equation solver. You can get the answer that way. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Again, guys, um, this isn't published yet, so it's a little bit light. But this is today's course folder. The quadratic formula equation solver is right here. There's the link. You can click on there. And when you do that, you get this right here. Okay? I think you can kind of see that. But guys, I'm gonna, I have to go back and see what was. A is 1. B is negative 1. C is negative 1. All right, let's put it in there. A is 1. B was negative 1. And C was negative 1. All right, there. It does it for us. Shows us the graph, exactly where the solutions are. All right, it gives us um, the decimal, the long decimal here. But if you notice, right there, you guys, it gives you a good answer. It's 1 half, plus or minus, the square root of 5 over 2. 
Or you could write it like this. 1 plus or minus the square root of 5, the whole thing, over 2. Right? It tells you that the discriminant is 5. That's a good thing to know. Right? It shows you where the vertex is. Right? If you guys want to use that, feel, feel free. All right, guys, that's it. Please fill out today's notes assignment and complete the vocabulary assessment. We will do the vocabulary assessment and the summary in the second Zoom meeting. Okay, please participate in the discussion question. It's also in the green folder. And here are th uh, today's three vocabulary questions. All right, that's it. Thanks.